All right, let's get practicing in QuickBooks Online. Grab the link below in the description so that you can follow along. All right, here we are in the QBO Gym. And the QBO Gym is a place where we have numerous hands-on exercises that simulate real life scenarios that you may encounter as a bookkeeper. Every single month we come out with new exercises and we break it down for you into four different sections. Today we're working in the February year one warm-ups section. At the top here is an animated video to give you an understanding of what you, the bookkeeper, will be doing for Craig this month. He is our fictitious business owner. Further down is an interactive pre-assessment quiz. Below that are all of the exercises within this section. And at the bottom here, there is an optional area where after you have completed all of the exercises in this section, we have some sample posts that you can use on your LinkedIn to share with everybody what you have learned so far. So let's dive into today's exercise where we're going to practice processing the money that Craig paid out of this, or paid out this month, specifically adding expenses. Go ahead and click on that link to get the exercise pulled up for you. I have it over here on the right hand side. So let's see what we're going to do today. Craig left you a stack of receipts to enter for purchases you made since you last visited. Click the link beneath the animated video or warm ups video on the previous page to grab a copy as we will use them for this exercise. So let's go up here to the top where we have that animated video here in the gym. There is this button that says stack of receipts. Go ahead and click on that. And when you do, you will see that it will download for you. Go ahead and click on that when you get it. And this is what it will look like when you have pulled it up. All right, so you will need to be in the same session of the sample company that you did the previous exercises in. If you have not completed those exercises yet, go ahead and click on the link on the top right corner of your screen. That'll take you to the first one, complete that one, and all the ones after that until you get back to this one. They all build on each other, so it's really important that you start with that first one. So let's get started with the exercise. One of the challenges when receiving receipts is knowing which account they were paid out of. If you can't tell from the receipt itself, you'll need to ask Craig. For these exercises, we will assume that Craig used his debit card and paid for all of them from his checking account. Also, as a note here, we will not be working with sales tax in these exercises. So the first one we are going to start with is the receipt that says Tanya's. So again, here are all of the receipts that we are going to be working on in this particular exercise. Here is the one for Tanya's. Now, even though it doesn't specifically say Tanya's Nursery, we can reasonably be assured that it is the same one um, Tanya's is ta Tanya's Nursery. You could always ask Craig, of course, if you wanted to double check. So let's go ahead and add the expense. We're going to click on the plus new button and then click on expense. I have the sample company over here on the left hand side. This is the last page that I left off of from the previous exercise, which is why it shows this way. Go ahead and click on that plus new button. And then under vendors, you're going to select expense. And that expense transaction will uh, come up for us. So let's fill it out. In the payee field, we're going to select Tanya's nursery. So click into it. You can either start typing like I'm doing, or you can scroll down until you find Tanya's nursery. Go ahead and click on her name. You will notice that the payment account is already showing as checking, which is perfect. This is how Craig had paid for it. So this is what we want to keep it as. Now next, you will need to decide whether to add the items in the category grid which is right here, or the item details grid. They will go in the item details grid if Craig wants to track how many he has on hand, so inventory product, or just how many he has purchased over time, which is a non-inventory product. If so, they will be set up in products and services. If neither are true though, they will go in the category grid. Now in Craig's case for this particular expense, he tracks bags of soil, so right here, but he does not track the bags of mulch. 
So we need to go ahead and start filling this out. But note first here, before we do that, if you type plants and soils, you will be presented with what looks like two identical choices from the dropdown. First option is the expense account, and the second one is the income account. They are alphabetically based on the full account name. So the expense one is job expenses, job materials, plants, and soil, versus the income one, which is landscaping services, job materials, plants, and soil. In a real life scenario, though, you may want to consider changing the name so that you can easily tell which one is which. So let's go ahead and fill in the one for the mulch. Remember, we're not going to be um, tracking the actual amounts of bags. So that goes in the category details grid. In the category details grid, let's go ahead and start typing in plants. Um, go ahead and click into that. You may have some information already populated up here. This is a setting in the account settings where it's pulling from a previous transaction. So just delete what is currently in there. We're going to type in plants for plants and soil. You see there are two exact same ones. The first one is the one that we want. This is the expense account. So go ahead and click on that. In the description field, we're going to type mulch. This just gives us a better understanding of what this particular transaction was for. And then in the amount field, we're going to type 125. So clear what is currently in there, type 125. When you clear, uh, click out of it or hit the tab key, you will see that QBO has automatically made the adjustment for us. Now note that we do not need to indicate the number of bags of mulch because again, Craig is not tracking that. This is why it is in the category details grid. But now we need to add the bags of soil, which is something that he does track. So we need to click on the arrow next to item details grid to expand it. If you want to collapse this one, you can just click on the arrow and that collapses the category details grid. And now we want to click on this arrow to open up the item details grid. Let's go ahead and fill this out. Click in the product service field on the first line. Go ahead and type soil for it to show up for you. Once you find it, you're going to click on it. In the quantity field, we want to type 20 because that's how many bags of soil there were. So delete what is currently there, hit or type in 20. When you hit the tab key over, you will see that QBO has automatically made the calculation of $20 or excuse me, 20 quantity times $6.50. Now you'll note too that the description says two cubic feet bag right here, and the rate is that $6.50. And this information is coming from the products and services list. If the description or price had been different, you can always make the adjustment here. Um, there's no, um, it's not like set in stone. This is just what will show up because we already have it set up that way, but you can always overwrite it. As it is, however, it matches the receipt that is on Tanya's. It says for $130, which is right here. And if I expand the category details grid one more time, you will see that the amount for 125 is the mulch, and that is what it is showing here. It is showing the total as 255. So the total on the transaction matches what is on the receipt. So we are all good here. We have a couple of other ones to enter. So let's go ahead and just click on the save and new button that is down here on the bottom right corner of the sample company. Click on that. And that expense for $255, the one for Tanya's has been saved. And now we have a new one showing up here for us. Let's go ahead and enter the one for Hicks Hardware. So in the payee field, let's select Hicks Hardware. So click into it. You can start typing in Hicks or you can go ahead and scroll. Once you find the name, click on it. You will see the payment account is showing as checking. This is perfect. This is what we already want. Now Craig does not track individual shovels, so we'll add, we'll use the category grid, not the items grid for this one. Also, you will notice that this form is auto-filled with the previous transaction from this vendor. So we're going to change the information. And once again, that is a setting in account and settings. You can always turn it off. Um, but if you have it turned on, if you have, it may be worth it if you have um, expenses that are the same amount all the time, although you could make it a recurring transaction. Um, that way it is already showing up here for us. Again, you can always overwrite it, which is what we're going to do right now. 
So in the category uh, field, we're going to uh, click into it and we're going to, you can click into it several times so that you can delete what is there and start typing in supplies. When you see it appear, go ahead and click on that. In the description field, we're going to type shovel. So click into that description field, type shovel. And then the amount is $24.38. So let's click into that amount box, delete what is there, and type in 2438. And now this one is all done as well. So now we can just go ahead and click on Save and New. Click on that green Save and New button right there. That expense for Hicks Hardware for 2438 has been saved, and now we have one final expense to fill out. So finally, we're going to enter the receipt for uh, the one that says. Bob's. Um, even though it doesn't say Bob's Burger Joint, specifically, we can be reasonably assured that it's the same um, vendor. So you can always ask Craig about this if you need to, to double check, but we will move forward assuming that it is Bob's Burger Joint. In the payee field, go ahead and select Bob's Burger Joint. Click on that down arrow and he is right there at the top. Go ahead and click on that. Once again, you see that the payment account is showing as checking, which is what we want it to be, so you can leave that as is. In the category field, we're going to select meals and entertainment. So click into it and you could start typing in meals. Now you will notice here that there are two different categories set up in Craig's chart of accounts for meals. One is travel meals and one is meals and entertainment. Now travel meals would likely be when Craig or his employees have to travel um, to another location, such as if they were going to a conference. Meals and entertainment is likely used if Craig were to wine and dine a potential or current client. Taking the crew out for lunch doesn't qualify for either of these and all of the meals have different tax implications. In a real life scenario, you would want to check with Craig and or his accountant to confirm that th how they would like this to be categorized. You could create an ask my accountant category or use a tag to mark this for later um, so that you would remember to go back and ask one of them. For the purposes of this exercise though, we're just going to choose meals and entertainment Entertainment. So let's go ahead and do that. In the description field, we want to type lunch for the crew. So go ahead and type in that description, lunch for the crew. The amount for it was $55. So let's go ahead and type that in the amount field. And then we are all good to go here. We want to simply save and close. Now, as a really quick note here and aside, the sample company is constantly changing dates. And so we don't on our expenses here have actual dates to use. But when you are doing this in a real life scenario, you always wanna make that payment date match whatever is on the receipt. That's really important to make sure your dates are always matching. But again, because the sample company is changing, um, uh, dates, we don't put anything specifically on here, so you can leave that payment date as is. So now we are all done, so we are going to click on save and close, click on that down arrow next to save and new, and then select save and close. And there you go, that one has been saved, and now we have added three expenses. And if you have any questions or want to know more about the QBO gym, just click on the link below in the description. Be sure to leave this session of the sample company open as you will need it for the next exercise in the warm-up section where we practice processing the bank feeds. And I will see you in the next video.